Indoor cycling, Zwift, racing, parenting. We cover those and all of our hopes and dreams in between. Welcome to the Talk Dirty to Me podcast, an entertaining look into the lives of everyday people trying to achieve virtual cycling glory from our basements and garages from around the world. This podcast is rooted in Zwift and has evolved into found friendships, fitness, health, and a little sprinkle of humor. This may be one of the only podcasts where a little heavy breathing shouldn't scare you away because we're riding our bikes while we're recording it. All right, we're back. This week we have a uh, special guest from across the pond. It's our one of our two English Neils. You guys have met the first one. This is Neil Tucker. Welcome, Neil. Morning. How are we doing? Doing fine. Yeah. All, All right. right. So, Neil, let's start off with, obviously, you're not Australian. For those listeners who may think differently, no. you are from England, if I'm correct in that. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm about I'm, I'm about Australian as Keith is from Canada or something, <laughs> I suppose. Ah. Yeah, no, um, you'd be surprised. From Liverpool, thirty, yeah, <laughs> yeah, thirty-seven years old. Yeah, uh, got a girlfriend, not married, girlfriend for like fifteen years or so. Two kids, Alex and Ethan. Alex is nearly fifteen. He's fifteen in a couple of weeks, and Ethan's ten. And uh, for work, I'm currently a firefighter. Been a firefighter for 13 years, up until like next week when I've, re- I've resigned, basically. And that's me. I've been on Zwift for about, I don't know, about two years, I think. So since the start of the pandemic, I'm kind of. Well, yeah, I had Zwift before, and was what happened. I was riding to work maybe three years ago, and I got hit yeah. by a car. And then, so I was off the bike for like, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't like a terrible accident, but also you get paid out, don't you? And stuff like that. And then, so, so I got this, this money that I was going to spend on a new bike and then the pandemic started, didn't it? And so I thought I'd get a proper turbo trainer as well. I had one as wheel on once, didn't I? And it's terrible when you've got a wheel on trainer and I was on Zwift maybe, <laughs> maybe four years ago and I was just ruining races. I was either going far too slow or far too fast. <laughs> it wasn't calibrated. I didn't know what I was doing. So I just kind of gave up with it, and then, and then when I got paid out after the accident, I bought like a proper turbo trainer, and got on properly. Yeah. And you've been with dirt for a while, right? Well, yeah, I would. <laughs> if you go into my Swift Power Profile, it's quite funny. I've got effectively. I joined a race, and it was a C race, and I didn't know what I was doing. In fact, no. In fact, no, that's a lie. I joined a B race because I was half thinking, I'm okay, I'm not great, I'm okay, but I'm probably not yeah. a C. So I entered a B race and I got absolutely walloped. Everyone just spins out the, go- out the gate, yeah. don't they? And I was half thinking, there's something wrong here. This train is rubbish, this game's a pile of crap. This isn't right. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. So I entered a C race and I think I came second in a C race. Yeah, I thought, oh, this is all right. But obviously, obviously I didn't know how to use power ups, did I, or anything? So, and then my second C race, I'd figured out, I, I must have been on Zwift Insider or something. I'd figured out what I was doing. And then I won that and then I got promoted to B. So I, I had quite a steep learning curve. I had two races in C and got promoted to B. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't know how I ended up in dirt. I was just like looking for teams. I'd, in fact, no, that Matt Levesseur, do you know him? Uh, he rides for dirt. Yes. Name sounds familiar. Yeah. Well, he reached out to me. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if somebody he you know I must have I must have won won a race on Crit City or something, and he reached out to me and asked if I wanted a time trial. So I was like, yeah, it's not really my thing. <laughs> I'm just kind of sitting sprint. But anyway, a couple of weeks later, I ended up on a on on a proper dirt team. Do you remember which team it was? Like which TTT? Yeah, well, yeah. I start. No, no. I started off in the in the eastern in the, in, in the European zone. So our team was really good. It was just full of sandbaggers. It was like me, Snowy, Nordy, uh, who else is there? Dan Poyton, Scott Olson, and Eric. Eric from Swift Insider. Yeah. yeah. So it was basically always against. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's basically always against the sandbaggy Germans, <laughs> the Kirchmere team. <laughs> and obviously we all got promoted, didn't we? So we all had to come up to A. 
and then after that, I ended up with uh, you know, you guys and Eat Dirt. With Brasta as your yeah, leader. Yeah, so that was the second season, I think. No, Brasta wasn't there at the yeah. time, I don't think. Yeah, Brasta wasn't there. Yeah, yet. I come over when it was like Jay. I, I, I think Jay was in charge, and I think yeah, Jerry was Jerry, around. Jerry. Jesse, Steve. Although I didn't realize Steve joined just after me. Huh. Uh, Dan Meyer. Yeah. And stuff. I think it was all those lot. Yeah. It's a fairly. Yeah, that's what team I got put on initially. Fairly competitive group there. Yeah, we had the world. Well, yeah, we had the world's worst A team. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously, Jay picked his like Jay picked his A squad, and then who is who was it? It was like me, Jesse, Steve, uh, Dan, uh, Blake. We we just got our asses kicked <laughs> literally every single week. <laughs> <laughs> you know the division was even worse, and it had like a, it had all like you know that D pack team and an Aero who are all in the in the A pack division now. Yeah, all those Aussie pros. It was terrible. And this is ZRL we're referencing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and then and then obviously from ZRL, I just ended up time trialing, didn't yeah. I? You got no choice, then have you? This, yeah, yeah. I ended up time. No, I ended up time trialing <laughs> after after a season was. It is. With that ZRL team. It's funny because people joined wanting to do ZRL and then it's like, hey, you just slowly break them down. You're like, you should join us Thursday. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's right. 15 minutes earlier. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a day of rest in yeah, between. Which we're yeah. currently on. Yeah. You know what? I think I actually enjoyed the time. Yeah. I think I enjoyed the time trialing more than the, the actual ZRL, to be honest. Well, I think it's. Yeah, I kind of floated and out of it. I did this season as a B, get my, my <laughs> Drew, teeth. Drew did, in. Drew did. He you did know. fine. He's in B one. He's not. He's not BFL. <laughs> he's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I floated and out of that. That's, that's the measure of success. I, I didn't come in dead last, yeah. so I'm all right. I'm surviving. Are you doing ZRL this season? Yeah, I only kind of. Not really. I tell Broster that I'll be. I'll be a, 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 a spare sub. Yeah. That's that's yeah. the Greg. I don't move. like the pressure of it, to be honest. Yeah. Greg gets to cherry pick which. You know, I'm probably imagining. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably imagining it, but I kind of feel sometimes there's an expectation on me to get points because I can sprint yeah. or win or something. And you know, I don't want to let people down, so it's easier just not to race. Yeah. If I don't feel good, I'll just be like, no, <laughs> I'm not riding. <laughs> As opposed to disappoint people. <laughs> I'm probably, it's probably just in my head. But... I think it is. See the summary. Yeah. yeah. No, but I think there is, you know, if I do like a kind of, I don't know, a race on, you no know, crit city, there would be an expectation for me to win. Probably. And then if I don't win, I feel like I yeah, yeah I feel like I've done rubbish if I don't win. Well, so. I think you're you're being <laughs> humble, which is appreciated. But when you say yes. you have a sprint, I would argue you probably have the sprint <laughs> of e dirt. Well, there you go. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So if I so if I, so if I mess up or I don't feel good and I don't do very well, then it's kind of. I'm kind of letting people down, aren't I? If I don't get twenty points on the FTS, nah. I think if you get I, any points, you, I, you're I, there. Would, I would, yeah, yeah. I would, I would still have you on my team. Yeah. Yes, that is. It's also hurt. Yeah. Unanimous. It's surf. also ben, benefit of the listeners that don't yeah. surf our Discord. N Neil Tucker is a unit of strength right. measurement. <laughs> we determined that last <laughs> episode. Well, that I think it was last episode. Yeah. About how there's a, I think Alan Fisher came up with it. He's talking about a Tucker, and you know, as a, a unit. So yeah. he's like, you know, I oh, went point yeah. six Tucker on that sprint, which is, <laughs> you know, impressive. It's, what's that? it's like a like a thousand watts or yeah, something. So like a thousand watts. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So now, tell us a little bit about riding in the area you're in, because now we've had Hannah. We've had Neil, other Neil, Woody for us. Uh, yeah. And I'll be honest and say that the UK, I've never been there, want to go, but it's a conundrum to me, an enigma, if you will, because I don't know how close you are to Hannah, how close you are to Neil. My, well, 
in uh, yeah, yeah very see no geography. Say, in uk terms i'm absolutely miles away in us terms i'm probably just down the road <laughs> however i'm not close enough <laughs> to go and meet up or have a ride i think they're kind of both near london aren't they and i'm in liverpool which is yeah. i think guess 220 250 miles north okay so yes yeah, so i'm kind of i'm kind of on the northwest coast gotcha um riding here well i'm kind of I, I am literally right on the coast so it's quite flat where i am if i want to find any hills i have to ride like 20 to 30 miles east you know and literally east if i go if i go if i go north or south it's just still flat again now do you see a lot yeah, of so if, if i want to find do you see a lot of wildlife on your adventures in the north of england no well no none no just no, yeah. no exotic animals well no. there's a few zebras yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Odin. there it is <laughs> yeah over in the yeah over in the rogue zebra no so the, the back story quite, of this yeah. <laughs> is that we were hanging out in the miller channel one day and uh we were talking we we're talking about Neil's brother got a pony with a unicorn horn, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. For your niece and yeah, nephew. Yeah, my sister got a, your sister got a unicorn. Yeah, for a birthday. Yeah. yeah. And so we got on this topic of ponies, and with the straightest faces of anyone, Neil tells us about a pony down the street from one of his rides that is wearing a zebra jacket, and he's he said he's like he's not fooling anybody. I know he's a pony. I tell you, I laugh so hard at that. <laughs> Just with the the veracity with which you were like, <laughs> he knows he's not a pony. Yeah, it's like who does? Yeah, who does this guy think he's kidding? Yeah. I know he's not a pony. He knows he's not a, a zebra. Yeah, even. Yeah, just... He's always got the same really jacket on. He never takes it off. He's sticking to a story. <laughs> he's wearing like the equivalent. Yeah, I have to go get some food of a duster, like a leather duster, for a pony. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I stopped and took a picture of him yesterday. He posted it in Discord. I, yeah. Again, I laughed extremely loudly. <laughs> it was so awesome. Good. Sorry, I had to had to lead you into that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise no, it is it's just it's just kinda of quite farmlandy out here. It is quite nice. You can get out to the country roads and stuff. Yeah. You know, country lanes. It's always windy, though. Know? Always windy. If you get like a still day, it's amazing, but they don't happen very often. Yeah, that's the thing about, I yeah, guess, and, coastal and towns, then, right? Having that breeze come off the ocean. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah, we're pretty, yeah. I'm pretty inland. Yeah, I'm literally a mile from the sea. You know, as a crow flies. So it's uh, oh, wow. yeah, all the way down the coast. Do you feel you take it's that for kind granted? Of a bit of a peninsula as well. Um, no, I don't think I do. Yeah. I think a lot of people around here do, but I've always had dogs and stuff, so I'm always down there. Yeah. You know, I've noticed that, yeah, I've noticed that people have got older, you know, people I went to school with and stuff, they're starting to appreciate it a bit more now. You know, when they just put them pictures up when they've been down the beach and stuff. Right. But I've always been going down there. So do you live in the same town you grew up in? Yeah. Yeah. I moved, well, yeah, I moved out, out of Formby. So I live in Formby, which is about 15 miles north of Liverpool. I went to uni in Liverpool, so I moved into Liverpool city centre for three years, and then I just came back. Gotcha. After that, hmm. yeah, it's yeah, it's quite a nice, cool. yeah, it's quite a nice area to live around Liverpool. How long have you been riding like, bikes and stuff? Um, well, I grew up playing football or soccer. Played that up until. I'd say properly until I was like 25, 27 or something. And then I probably started riding around around 2000. You know, it was, in fact, no, when was the Olympics? No, no, it must have been, it must have been around 2010 because it was just before or, you know, the, you know, I didn't jump yeah, on the bandwagon. I was already on the bandwagon before and, you know, before the London Olympics. So probably around 2000 yeah. and, Eight two 2009 I started riding but it was never regular like this wow. because because no, you didn't have Zwift and stuff 
if yeah. I got out on my bike, maybe maybe twice a week, three times a week, that was a good week for me. You know, I would never ride every day just because, you know, having kids yeah. and stuff and you just can't get out. And, you know, you know if I was a whiff, I wouldn't be sat in the garage on a turbo trainer. I was still playing football as well. So, but I've only been riding properly since I got the turbo trainer. Right. Very cool. Now, uh, what position do you play in, yeah, uh, in football? What? what position do you play, Neil, in uh, oh, and, football? Yeah, well, <laughs> I started off in sentiment field. And then when I went to university and got a little bit more unfit, <laughs> I ended up at centre half or centre back <laughs> in defence. <laughs> yeah, you don't really need to run very fast when you play. Well, I say you run very fast. You don't need to be able to run very much <laughs> when you play centre half. No, I've always had I've always had like a like a slight athletic advantage over people. I've never been an athlete, but I've always been like slightly faster and slightly stronger than like an average person. So I can yeah. yeah, so I can kind of get away with not being very fit in a lot of sports. You know, just with like kind of short bursts of energy. Yeah, you know, kind of like bike. Yeah, so kind of like Zwift, I suppose. And like, like sprinting. Yeah, I've always I've always been kind of quite quite quick. I don't think I am anymore, but yeah, you know, up until the age of like thirty, I could run quite fast. That's awesome. I think uh, you know, like in specifically with Zwift, people get uh, I don't want to say obsessed with, but like uh, are impressed by the sprint power. You know what I mean? Just because it's like explosive, it's a ton of watts yeah Watt bomb. and it's like if you have it you know and people people see that you have it as we were talking about earlier you know there's that expectation yeah. you just lay it down every time but it's uh something that people grow quite envious of you know yeah steve oh, comes to you, mind you, what? yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's just generally jealous isn't he yeah. i think I think that's specific to Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it takes a toll, though, you know. You know, there's a big difference for me. If I sprint, it's going to sound silly, this. But if I if I had to do, like, a like a 15 kilo or watt per kilo sprint, you know, in, in, in ZRL, I can recover from that quite actually quite easily. But if I, if I need to do a 17 watt per kilo sprint, you know, like a, like a sprinter palooza sprint, yeah. it just absolutely kills me. Like, it completely writes me off. Yep. So, so if there's someone in ZRL that can do that as well, then I'm just useless for the rest of the race. Right. Yeah, it takes a, you know, just like, just that like extra one or two watts per kilo. You yeah. Know, it makes it, it makes a massive difference. Yeah, that's true. Why? Well, that's the interesting thing, right? It's like everybody's in love with watts per kilo on Zwift. But I've always kind of thought like sprinting was just about pure watts. A lot of the sprints are flat, maybe a little slight uphill. But, you know, bigger riders have a little more advantage just because you can put out more watts. And I think, yeah, there's a lot of timing you know, to you it. see those red numbers. Well. <laughs> those red numbers jump up. and whew. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think if, you, if you're super switched on as well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of timing to it. I've lost races, at, yep. and I quite sadly look at Swift Power sometimes and look at, and look at, look at race results of people. And sometimes you wonder, how the hell is that guy won? You know, when a guy in second and third, I've got like 14, 15, 16 watt per kilo sprint. And the guy who's won has yeah. done, like done like an 11 watt per kilo sprint. And, and the 30 second power is lower. Because they've just timed it perfectly, haven't they? Yeah. Timed it perfectly. Yeah, they drafted right somebody power. else yeah. who was going 14 watts per kilo. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's true. So, it's yeah. a, so, I, I argue that as well. The timing makes up, I would say, at least 50% of it. Yeah. Smart time. Yeah. It's just it's just very hard to do when you're on a limit though, isn't it? Oh yeah. It's easy yeah, to do right. when you're on sprint to loser and you can pick your go point. <laughs> right. But, you can uh, take a lap off. Well and you've got yeah. you've got a pack of about eighty people to draft yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, it's very easy to miss time sprints, isn't it, Greg? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do we <laughs> did that together a couple weeks ago. Well, yes, the pack started. Did you see my video? Just oh, yeah. before us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did it? Oh, I went far too early. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you saw the video. I, I recorded the Libby Hill one, didn't I? And what's the last oh, did sprint? You? What's oh. he before Libby Hill? 
Yeah. You saw me having a little, have a, have a rage quit. I crossed the line, <laughs> didn't I? And there was one guy ahead of me and a half walk could catch him. But the guy was right on my wheel the whole way. I, I basically did the whole sprint solo off the front. Yeah. And I knew for a while, but I'd already committed. So I, so I yeah. had to go for it. Yeah. And I lost, and I lost the FTS by like, I don't know, two split seconds or something. And the guy that was on my wheel the whole time oh, no. took it off me. Oh. I had a right hissy fit, didn't I? <laughs> I have to go back. Like and watch sprint that. is good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, where well, you can just see me just like. What the- like this, <laughs> See, wave my arms around <laughs> when the scoreboard comes up on the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one went. I just like you know, I didn't really know where the, I didn't really know where the sprint started, and I just went two seconds early. And obviously, no one was going to catch me early, so I had to go for it. And there's that has to be one of the worst feelings when you go when you know you went too early, and you're like, well, I've yeah. done it now. I've yeah. got to commit. I'm committed. Yeah. 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 I've done it twice in ZRL. I did it once uh, and I've done it once. That long one, that long one by the Italian village, you know, when you go for the Italian village. Yeah. Yeah. And that long sprint. Yeah. yeah I've the done that before. I expected Watopia. everyone. Yeah. That's a, that's a long, long sprint, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I went on and that one once. Uh, and it's slightly uphill too. Yeah. I had Ever no choice so other than to lead everyone out <laughs> and just burn all my matches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was a terrible no move as well. Feeling. You know. Yeah, the reverse of that is Dodd's favorite sprint. Downhill into the bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that one. That's yeah, a beautiful thing. As a bigger dude, you get some momentum in there and you just as that one, the reason that I'm not a huge fan of that one though is because you gotta get through the S's first and then hit that stupid uphill before the downhill. Yeah. So by the time I'm hitting the downhill, the I'm trick like, oh, to that is. Yeah, that's nice on yeah. You sw- you you shift. Yeah, you shift, the- and you just ramp your cadence up to get up that little incline. It's going to slow yeah. you down, but then you just start putting power on at the top. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, the only problem with that the sprint. The pack anyway. it's, see, it's nice for sprinter palooza when everyone takes it nice and easy up the hill, or like at a steady yeah. pace. Yeah. However, how however in a race, in a race, everyone that's under, you get like people like Jerry who just who just throw a long bomb in for twenty minutes at the bottom, don't they? So you've got so, yeah. they just, so they just ruin it basically. They just ruin the race. <laughs> for FAL, for sure. J. Yeah, they just they just go like a minute out because you know that 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 they can't win the sprint on the downhill. So it yeah. ruins it for everyone else. I think I've I've yeah. still been able to get like FTS on that. Even I'm not I'm not in contention for FAL for sure, but Oh on that yeah. on that sprint. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you don't you don't need if you time it right. You don't need the pack for drafting nearly as much. Right. And you can carry a ton of right. momentum down. Going down. There was yeah, one race smashed. three seasons ago that I timed it perfectly and ended up with FTS and FAL. And I was like, "That's never going to happen again." Nice. Yeah, I got <laughs> smashed by Sterney on that a couple of months ago. It must have been a doozy race or something. He, I'm said he had a teammate, and I didn't realize. And I was, I was half thinking like, oh, I've got this in the bag. We'll just go up the hill. He's just going to concede this to me. And he went long, didn't he? And I seen him go, and I thought he's never going to make that. I'm, e- I'm easily going to get him. But he had a teammate, didn't he? I think his, I think his teammate had a ghost or something. And he got him just to the bottom of the bridge, and I couldn't catch him. I was like, oh, you absolute bastard! <laughs> yeah, but he went a minute out of the pair with him. I even seen him go, and I thought you're not doing that with your little B power. And he absolutely smoked me. <laughs> <laughs> a little B power. I don't know if you know, if Jerry little... goes. Oh, yeah. No, wait, Go ahead. No, wait, I was going to say if like an A plus goes, you've got to chase them. But when yeah. like you know when a B goes, you just let them go, don't they? Thinking like you're not getting away from it. And he did. He was super tucking on the downhill and everything. Yeah. I was say I'm sure Neil, you probably saw yesterday. There was a mass conversion from B to A. Oh, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah. So the loads, A's loads of people go. The ranks are expanding. A to, yeah. A to almost A plus. Yeah, there were loads yeah. of nearly A pluses as well. No, I follow yeah. quite a lot. A lot of lads yep. in the European, you know, in the in the in the EMA league. And loads of them got close to A plus last night as well. Yeah. Getting strong. Yep. I would say apparently we're all sandbaggers. <laughs> apparently that's it. 
yeah, I did have a little whinge today. about that. You know, because that because that course was used in the ZRL final, wasn't it? The other year. Yeah. Yeah. And no one got well, disqualified after doing similar power numbers to what they did yesterday. But yesterday, you're doing that climb completely well, fresh, weren't you? You'd expect yeah. people to yeah. right. you know, go over the power numbers. But not after three leg snappers and three yeah. sprints. I think. Then the finish was at the top for the championship. Yeah. So people didn't have to kind of push through the banner to get the super tuck or anything. So Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was yesterday was uh this one. Yeah. yeah fun. I, I, I would have liked to race that yesterday if it wasn't on nights. But I would have definitely got dropped in our race. Oh it was it was some yeah, it, it was, was some brutal. Was going B one, you know, is obviously I think so for context, thirteen out of sixty two got yeah. disqualified okay. for upgrade or you know, for <laughs> code sevens, which is the too much power yeah. for your yeah. race it's a wtrl speak for right sandbagging. which meant that our team of i would say low to mid bees who are were just consistent and just trudging it through ended up third overall yesterday i was gonna say one by default <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, exactly win to win. Yeah. <laughs> every other team had at the least one person that disc that disqualified i think except for us yeah yep. well and i think we had all six riders right. accumulate yeah. points. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, I, I remember in that ZRL final, there was like, no, I got dropped with like a, a few of the others around like 11, 12 minutes, and I was right on the limit. I was kind of sandbagging at the time, and about twenty-five of them went up the road. They completely dropped me on on the climb, you know. And when it got to twenty minutes, you could see you could see about ten of them. They just stopped because they didn't know what to do. They all just stopped and 10 just said, like, oh, fuck this. I'll just keep going. You know, and they, uh, <laughs> no, and no one will affect you. caught offside. You will effectively, the winner got disqualified. No one else got disqualified, only the winner. Yeah. So the other, <laughs> yeah. so the other handful of guys that went way over the limit or, or kept the points. There's always that one guy in the, uh, in the chat on races like that, or like in a B race when somebody goes off the front at like 4.5. Yeah. Just let him go. <laughs> let him yeah. go. He's not. He's not a B. Sandbagger. There's always the one guy who's looking out for everybody. You know? the, the funniest thing yesterday though was uh, there were no FAL points given out because everybody who was FAL got disqualified. Yeah. Right. And they didn't yeah. like default them down. Uh, no, did they not? Nope. No. Right. So not a he's single FAL point top went out down. yesterday on B1. Oh, they sorted. They sorted the fastest throughs. Uh, but not the FAL. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. I thought they did. I thought someone said they updated. I need to check. <laughs> Research department, get on it. That's just a mess, isn't it? I was 11th on the FTS <laughs> for, the, for the sprint. The sprint. For the sprint. Okay. Yeah. For the little yellow house sprint. That's your favorite sprint, Dodd. That's Sully's favorite sprint. Happy That's birthday Sully's to Sully, favorite. by the way. Today's his birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Sully. Record day is his birthday, I should say. I remember it was for Sully's birthday two years ago. He made everyone willing to uh, ride the volcano, 25 laps volcano, I think. <sighs> and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's a bad Still feel a little idea. bad for that. I remember this was about a year ago, maybe a little, a little less than a year. During the Discord, we were talking, and I had just recently figured out, kind of on my own, through sheer just luck and trying some stuff out, how to sprint on Zwift. And I was like, "Oh, God, guys, I think I figured it out!" Like 850, 90 watts for 30 seconds. Like, wow. <laughs> and Neil comes in and shows <laughs> me sure, his power graph, and I was like. Oh, okay. well, that's cool. How'd you do that? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> he actually sent me the video of him doing it, and I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. so Some leg speed, I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm not yeah. convinced. Well, I was, I was convinced that I was the most efficient way to sprint, but I'm not so much convinced anymore. Because you see some people, and they do like, like, 
the max 90 and they're still doing the same power as what i'm doing so i don't know yeah. the best way to, I, you know i don't know the best way to do it anymore i think probably the best way is whatever way gets you to that number right yeah yeah yep the max is your number at um, i was like i tried for a little while a high cadence like spin up really high and then shift down yeah, I think that's, through yeah. your sprint as you're going. Yeah, that, def, that definitely I tried that buys for a while. you. It worked. Yeah, that definitely buys you extra watts. If you get your leg speed up to like yeah. 120, and if your gears are good and you can yep. shift under load, yeah, you can definitely yeah. get an extra couple of hundred watts for a few seconds if you're strong enough to hold it. Right. That's the, yeah. That's the ticket. You got to know yeah. which which shift is going to start slowing your cadence. Man, I yeah. thought you were going to go. Yep. You got to know yeah. when to hold them. Oh. Know when to yeah. fold them. Man. I've even, <laughs> I've even, sorry. I've even tried moving back up the block. You know when you start, start grinding. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, know, you can Shift do that with electronic down. gears. Yeah. But that's only just yeah, to... not so much real ones. Yeah. <laughs> Mechanical ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. The, uh, the kicker bike, will limit you at 125 RPM. Really. It'll start adding resistance, so that you don't break it. Ah. I also, you know, the SB20, yeah. the stages bike has the brakes, which we've talked about before. Yeah. I but, tried for a couple of weeks to use the kicker bike's brakes to my advantage. No. I don't think so. Not for me. <laughs> so so <laughs> when you say it adds resistance at 125, does that resistance turn into power? It, it does, okay. uh, but you run the risk of <laughs> breaking yeah. your bike. Whatever. Get your, yeah, your but you just grind up. Yeah, but I think you just like, grind for halt, wouldn't you? I think Probably. at the end of a sprint, <laughs> it's like having a little kicker at the end of a sprint, isn't it? You don't you don't need that, do you? Oh right. Yeah. No, you want it to go downhill at the end of a sprint, don't you? And just maintain cadence. So you coast it, yeah. 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 That's, I mean, so much of Zwift is that, and I think it's always funny to hear the discussions, at least in our own Discord, of like. At the end of the day, it is a video game, so there are hacks to it yeah. to <laughs> to get better at different things. You know, like obviously, if you want to be a better climber, lower your weight, just be lighter, or just ride the finale so, of season three <laughs> of CRL for this this year. Upgrade yourself. Uh, Yesterday, you know, there was go ahead. Sorry, no, I said there was a discussion recently about which is better, lower cadence. Or higher cadence for staying in the pack and at least i've determined that lower cadence definitely keeps you in the pack and allows you to maneuver around the pack a little bit easier yeah. than spinning around at 90 rpms so i, I yeah. think that probably has to do with the fact that like if you're going to lower cadence you have some wiggle room to increase your cadence if you're starting right, to fall exactly. back yeah for sure yep which yes i'd also agree with that but yeah which also for for somebody like me like I have the strength in my legs. My aerobic endurance is definitely not where it needs to be to keep 90, 95 RPMs for an hour, hour and a half. It's because you spend too much time at the lake in the summertime. Way too much time at the lake. Yeah. We've determined On a boat, that. fishing, drinking beers. <laughs> that's, that's Drew's guaranteed way to stay at sea. I'm dropping back to <laughs> <No>. sea, boys. <laughs> Yeah, I also Here I, come like yeah, I also think this is going to be a bit of a revelation. I think a lot of people could probably sprint a lot harder than what they think on Zwift. Like I, I am yeah. actually trying to trash my bike when I'm racing, which is silly because one day it will break and I'll be really sorry. <laughs> but I think some people can kind of, kind of hold back a little bit for fear of actually kind of, you know, ripping the handlebars off. Because I yeah. am literally trying to break my bike when I'm when I'm in a race. Some... Yeah, uh... With that said, where do you put your hands when you sprint? Yeah, always on the hoods. I wrap my hand around the hoods yeah. and, just, yeah. and just pull up. Yeah. There was discussion yeah, I think one. recently about that, too. Yeah. Like, I'm not riding outside. I don't need to be aero, yeah. so I'm not in the drops. That's strange. I don't really care. I, I feel, just need to maximize power. I feel power. super uncomfortable sprinting in the drops or in the hoods. I always reach down into the drops. It just feels natural. See? He's, he's a purist over yeah. here. Oh, I, maybe, like, I just, maybe it's time to switch your tactics. I feel like I have. Yeah, I just don't think you can get the same leverage. Body control. Yeah. You know, if you obviously if you lower down, you'd have to use your core to pull up, wouldn't you? You yeah. know, obviously make that motion. 
I know. I kind of just kind of stand up like that and just stomp and pull at the same yeah. time. And so I get right over my front, front That's wheel. That's the, the forgotten motion, right, of sprinting, is that pull up on the backside. Yeah. Like, you, if you really, really want to get a good sprint number, you have to pull. <laughs> yeah, but you can't really do that outside. Outside, you have to be in the drops, and then you have to yeah. really engage yeah. your core. You know, when you're pulling up, you have to engage yep. your core, otherwise you start doing a wheelie, don't you? And then, yeah. Also, on the outside, you have the ability to rock the bike a little more. And yeah. Right. Use that leverage. You so. use the bike as a lever. Yeah. Well, and that's like, like even with a rocker plate, like the rocker rocks you the wrong way for that lever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're fighting the. Plate. So you have to counteract with your upper body. Yeah, that's a very weird motion to get used to on the plate. Yeah, yeah, on the rocker plate. Yeah, because it's it's all gravity. It's like when you put pressure down on one side, the bike is going to lean to that side, yeah. and uh, in the real world, yeah. it pushes down, yeah. and your bike leans opposite. Yeah, well, because right. you're yeah because you're able to shift it over to move it yeah which actually Neil, have you ever done oh, okay. well, i was just gonna say it actually helps put more pressure into torque. the pedal yeah and more torque yeah. into the pedal when the bikes go in the opposite direction right. yep neil have you ever done like a training plan or anything like that no for cycling no i started to, <laughs> no i started to when i got promoted to that's what happened i got promoted to a didn't i and then we got our asses kicked like well and truly and i thought you know and i actually got unfitter because that's what i was trying to do was because i was getting dropped every race so so i would deliberately get dropped and just try and win sprint points so i wasn't i wasn't doing any like you know any kind of you know, endurance work because there was no points i was going to get dropped anyway so i dropped back down to b didn't i yep. so i thought like you know i'll see the next time i come back up to a i'll try and get a little bit fitter so I've done a few, like, uh, to training, you know, plans to a degree, but I've never followed one through. Yeah. I'm too lazy. It'd be a challenge for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty so sure you do with work. with the new job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So with your new job, what's your what's your riding schedule going to be like? Are you still going to be able yeah. to I ride with the dirt? That was my yeah, first well, thought when he said he was switching jobs. I was like, uh-oh. I know, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I hope so. It won't be like him. Um, oh, so yeah, I'll, I'm, I, might, I might have to cancel my Zwift for, for five weeks. I'm going away for five weeks in <gasps> June. Whoa. Yeah, so. Is this for, I, for legal purposes? <laughs> no, <or? laughs> nah, I don't know. Just, <laughs> just training. I don't know. If I'll be able to, you know what? Well, I'm half hoping that this company would have set me up in a hotel room. You know, you know, for this, you know, for the five weeks, and if they do, I'll just take my turbo trainer and yeah. sneak it in in the middle of the night and just leave it in the room. <laughs> However, if it's like a Monday to Friday thing, I don't think yeah. I'll be carting it down there every week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to see how to see how the land lies after the first week. But I'm, sure. yeah, but I might disappear for a month. I don't know. Yeah, but after that, I'm gonna bet you'll probably still be on Discord, but just not right. Yeah, yeah just bullying Steve <laughs> yeah. on Discord, yeah, even more yeah, so. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does bring that those one of the... himself. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. <laughs> he just he shouldn't ask for it so hard. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, no, I've actually got a funny recollection. My no, I've I what feel, I know, I've all that cat gif stuff started. <laughs> no, I didn't realize. That Steve had only joined Eat Dirt maybe like a week after I had. I thought he was like a regular, and I'd only been around for like a couple of weeks. So, so obviously, no one really knew each other. So, everyone's kind of half being polite to each other. But I don't think there were loads of people online at the same time because the messages were flying. And then all of a sudden, Steve posted this picture. I'm sure it's a shoulder of a cat too. And I'm obviously the Discord. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the Discord just went silent. Like, like, I'm, 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 like, everyone. I could see Jesse would would start typing something, and then it would stop. And then Nordy would start typing something, and it would stop. And you forget that like, this was probably this was probably midday for you because I was sat on the couch drinking. So I'm so I'm I'm thinking to myself, are we really so going to let him get away? Your inhibitions were already lowered. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like it's like we can't really let him get away with this, can we? I mean, I know I don't really know him. <laughs> However. 
he's just posted a picture of a cat on his shoulder. <laughs> so I was like, it's like, I'll just do it. So I sent, so I sent this cat gift or something. But I'm pretty sure Jesse and Audi did it at the exact same time. And then the floodgates opened. They like literally, he got bombarded for about three hours of cat gifts. I was just sat on the couch, just laughing. You know, Hev, Hev's like, "What are you laughing at?" I'm like, "Oh, nothing." No, just nothing. But you know, he's just like howling at all these cat gifts. And Steve's like, "Oh, please stop! Just stop!" <laughs> oh man, uh, that was awesome. That was a that was, was a great day. Yeah, but because you talk, the, so- I think that was the same conversation that was like just tattoos in general. I think didn't Jerry post a picture of his tattoos? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. Yes. No, that's maybe that what Keith started Miller, it. Yeah. I think Keith called it out. He's like, he thought it was Steve. He's like, did your cats write that? Is that <laughs> in their handwriting? Yeah. And then he's like, that's my daughter's handwriting. Oh, he's got cave into it, hasn't he? Across his ribs. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, but I remember just, I remember just thinking like, it's like he's put this picture up, and it's like, is it real? I think it is a shoulder, isn't it? It's like, it's like, you know, because, but because no one knew, really knew each other. Everyone was being polite. I was like, no, we can't let him get away with this, can't we? Someone needs to say something. <laughs> and there began the epic cat, qu- cat gift quarrel. Oh, uh, yeah, and who the, knew there were so many cat the, gifts? Uh, love-hate bromance of Steve and Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Very much. No, he could have just taken it terribly, uh, couldn't he? And then I would have stopped. They would have ruined it for everybody. Yeah, but he took it quite but well. Instead, he's he, a so. good sport. Yeah. Yeah. So it is kind of his fault. Yeah. <laughs> was, was that uh, victim blaming? Is that, is that, what, that what we're doing here? Yeah. I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, I'm just making you mentally fault. stronger, they aren't I? It. <laughs> I'm just molding you into the person I want you to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told oh, him to fight me for it one day. You He's going to keep trying. You know, I yeah. told him that he'll thank me for all this all this bullying one day oh. when he becomes a stronger person. <laughs> one day. Yeah. When, when everybody beats him on all of his KOMs. Yeah. And instead of giving up, he tries harder. Yeah. Well, all right, Greg. It's the time oh, it of the show. 6.15. Fair enough. Yeah. So, we, we kind of got into this a little bit. This will be the first time we return to a return to a sort of a not every single week segment. We call it a periodic. But uh, today's segment is unfavorable upgrades. We covered this a little bit earlier, but I wanted to <laughs> drill down into it because, uh, like you guys discussed, like in DRL, about half half of B1 got disqualified. Um, and this is the last race of the season, correct? So yeah, the last yeah, true, right. true race for yeah. finals. All those, all right. those guys are done, done. Yeah. Eliminated. So they can't race yeah. playoffs now, which is yep. rough. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> which means guess who's, guess who's running playoffs this time. Yeah, no, I, I know. <laughs> The, 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 <laughs> like sh- shenanigans, which comfortably sat like in sixth and seventh place uh, as best finishes. I say that with full love and appreciation. I raced with y'all twice. <laughs> um, now, right, you guys have a full slate, and and uh, like teams can't go out and grab new riders to fill in because right. they haven't uh, raced the record. Because they have before. to have raced at least once. So. Well, I think it's. Oh, is it just once? I think it's just. I think, I think it's, it's just once. one race. It's three if you upgraded but stayed under the power line. Oh, there you go. So. I I thought there was something about the number of times a player had to race with you. Okay. That's Used to be. I think they did yeah. something. So I remember. Different. I remember. Yeah, Sully, that was for the finals, wasn't it? Sully was sweating. Yeah. How many times Hannah would race with you guys to make yeah. sure she would be in yeah. the finals? <laughs> but anyway. Um, it's interesting to me, and there's a lot of chatter about this, but I, I, I'm curious what you all think. Uh, 
why did WTRL do this? They had to know this would happen, right? Like, I and I, I think I posted something about this because this is the, you couldn't really do the tactic that Neil described that happened in A's where everybody flew off when it was after party. You know, go through leg snapper, sit in, go through leg snapper, sit in, then go up. Um, and they couldn't just crank up for 20 minutes or 19.5 minutes and then stop and still get a good finish. Instead, if you're going to be competitive on this race, uh, yesterday's race, you had to go hard <laughs> with everyone. You had to stay with the yeah. back. And so many people right. got DQ'd. So I, I'm curious. I mean, I don't know. I feel like WTRL had to know that that was going to happen to a fair number of riders. Yeah. And well, I think, Greg, it's very, yes. I think it's very hard for anyone other than an A to get up there in less than 20 minutes. Yeah. Isn't it? So you've got to, so you've got to break that 4.3 watt per kilo to do less than 20 minutes. Right. Yep. Yeah. So basically everyone, everyone B, C and D, if they go for gas, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to take more than 20 minutes and break that limit, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and if you look at the Zwift Power results from the B1 race yesterday, from our race, there were tons of people that were higher yep. than 4.3 sure. for 20 minutes. There's like four sevens, like yep. five right. oh. Yeah, like, come on. Well, and that's that's the fear of if I fall behind this early in this race, like I can't cover that back up, especially after the super tuck down the other side, and then you got leg snappers like. That's that's a gap you can't. Yeah. If somebody's doing four or five and I'm doing three and nine. Up. I'm not catching. So yep. the pack pushed I itself. I think to your to your question of surely WTRL yes. should would have known this would happen. Um I think if you're go, if you're going based on data that you have and all the riders that have thus put in efforts I have not reached that point. Your data hasn't given you the indication that they would go harder. Sure. Okay, right. fair enough. You know what I mean? Accusations of sandbagging in B1 are not exactly a new thing. Rampant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and yeah, but it's always going to happen because it's, because it's what because it's what they're probably thinking is the next season all these sandbaggers won't be able to ride. They'll have to ride. Sure. They'll have to ride May. Which make it better. Well, and I'm, however, there's always a fresh crop that come in, so it doesn't sure. really make yeah. any difference, but because there'll be people that have rode outside all right. summer. I would, I would yeah, so hope yep. that, like, and people talked about this, if they had done this as the second or third race, there would have been a proper yeah, sorting, sure. and then yep. those guys could have yeah. bumped up to somewhere else, found a new team, and then those teams could have found new riders that weren't weren't yep. you know <laughs> weren't uh yeah it's zebras and pony clothes would, would do though, greg yeah <laughs> no it's what everyone do though well i think sure. it's what a lot of people do they just wouldn't race to the top would they sure they just they just ride at 4.29 watts per kilo and then just finish where they finish well and that was the other crazy thing is you know like i would have almost expected there to be uh i don't know a bit of a gentleman's agreement that people aren't bombing up that thing yeah I will say the lead into the climb was probably the easiest we've had oh. all season. I mean, we were doing two, two, it two, wasn't four. Like the standard on the flats four, leading four into the climb. 4.5 out the gate Everybody for five was, minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was not that. I mean, it was four for maybe yeah. a minute, and 30 seconds. And then it was it down. It was four for the front, right? I think we were doing like two and a half yeah. to three. Yep. It was not fast. But if you factor in those watts that they did at the beginning and they're tr actively trying to like Drop you. keep like hold themselves back, yep. then those those front end watts would make a difference and they'd probably be higher sure. than they anticipated, right? Yeah, probably. It's just I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting easy. to me because it's such a yeah. it's the first time it is I in agree. CRL that there's been such a or yep. what, what appears to be a That's miscalculation by so many people. <laughs> right. Sterney yesterday, well, I well, messaged him and I was well, like, Greg, holy DQs, Batman. Yeah. Well, 
Will he be a member? Like, yeah, I've never seen that no happen one. like yeah, that before. Will he be a member? Lots of lots of people in that set are all final stopped, and lots of people carried on going. Sure. And very few people got yep. disqualified. You know, I think. You know, I think oh. Noah Balch won won the A race because he just did far too many watts. You know, he got disqualified, and the winner of the B race was some Aussie guy who got, or some or some New Zealand guy, and he was the only person that, that got disqualified. You know, everyone else was fine. You now, although he went way over, so I imagine yesterday people probably thought, oh, they're not going to disqualify me. I'll just go over sure. because because in the final, the no one time. got disqualified. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because last time, no one really got disqualified. That's a good point. However, <laughs> they've clearly changed their mind, haven't they? You no, know, especially it's especially yesterday. Everyone watching. did it yesterday fresh. So. Oh yeah. 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 Right off the bat. Funniest was to watch Sterney pace it. Where like guys were flying past him and I was like, the hell is he doing? Like, what? <laughs> What's going on? And he was sitting there steady at like four oh, four two. And yeah. Did his thing. And I was like, oh, there's a master at work, huh? Like, yeah. <laughs> looking back at it now, like I was saying yesterday, looking over DQs, there was Sterney. I think he ended up finishing like close to the top ten, well, and, not in the top ten. And see, it's horrible that climb, yeah, because because there's tractable parts on it, so you can't really afford to get dropped, yeah, because yep. because there are there are sections where it levels off for like 10, 15 seconds, isn't it? Yep. And if you're not in a pack there, yep. then you're in big trouble. So you kind of need to push on the steep bits, even if you don't want to. Yeah. Or oh, unless you're sturdy and you've got some kind of a <laughs> couple, you know, some kind of cheat code. Couple flat sections. I was. I was TTing it through by myself yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Drew died on a flat section yesterday. Yep. Like, all by myself, flat section hit, and my cadence went up, and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you need that pack, don't you? Uh, yep. Yeah, I was pretty much in no man's land because I started from the bottom. I was like, all right, I'm just going to try and hit my power goal because yep. that's no way. I set out yesterday just to make a PR, not to win. So. Yep. Said, I was like, if I could sit in three, 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 five lane, yeah. that'd be good. Ended up sitting like three, two, three, three. So, yeah, I wasn't totally disappointed. But you know what? I don't know how you guys do it that early in the morning. Because I struggle, <laughs> you know, sometimes at 10 o'clock. I don't know how you're doing max efforts. And that goes for everyone. I don't know how everyone's doing max efforts at 5 a.m. or whatever time it is over to half, half five. It's all about tricking the brain. You got to get on the bike at before the brain me, knows. Yeah what's going on I wasn't the brain is switched on you're already pedaling and your brain's like wait no i didn't well, agree I, to this <laughs> for consistency is the answer for yeah. me yeah. if you do it every day your body gets used to it yeah but know? it's just a fuel thing as well i don't know how you can fuel it's, it's, it's all right doing it you, way right too much before that. two rides like this yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you, you eat a large dinner every day yeah. every yeah. monday I wednesday eat, night i eat until i feel Big sick pasta dinner. <laughs> uh and, and I, oh, you guys limited no, it to Monday and Wednesday. That's it. And then I, I eat until I feel sick, but I don't eat oh, anything okay. after like seven thirty or eight. Just let it all, yeah, digest. See, that's the that's thing right. about ZR as well. Is it just me, or do you focus on it far too much? Cause I do, that's another reason I don't race all the time. Sometimes <laughs> I half think like you know, you know, if I'm in work and I've not done any weight, it'll be like a, it'll be like a Saturday, and I'm thinking like. I probably shouldn't do squats today because I've got a race in three days. Yeah. And then I just don't do any weights. <laughs> right. like, this isn't good for my training. Yeah. This one race that I'm probably going to get dropped in anyway. Yeah. And I haven't raced for... Yeah, I kind of, I got stuck into that pattern last fall. I took coming back from the lake where I was like, all right, like I'm going to get serious now. Subscribe to Train the Road. Like I'm all in on this. Then like after the holidays, and I was kind of like plateauing. And I was like... What the hell am I doing? <laughs> hey, now, I to be have, fair, though, have a beer the night before a race. Like I should have a beer. Drew did join Trainer Road, and has been doing Trainer Road ever since. <laughs> yep. And are you or are you not in a B? Right? I am, but is that? There's always a but. There's two other You're stronger than you were. <laughs> One switched my power meter to the pedals, <laughs> and two I upgraded <laughs> on the. TTT race the week before World Championships, where Squirrel and yeah. Tiago were on the team, and that was a painful ride. <laughs> I was they like, just pushed you to your limit. They didn't make it for that. you. Nope. Yeah. I haven't hit close to those numbers since that race, which is why. 
Now, the real question that I have for you, Drew, yes. is have you watched any more Marvel movies? <laughs> Actually, so I didn't watch Marvel. I watched The Batman. Um, DC. Oh, yeah, that's right. I watch, I'm that watching that this weekend. I, so, spoil, spoil away. Growing yeah, was, up as a... No. Yeah, that was filmed in Liverpool. <laughs> I like that. Oh. Was it really? I was yeah. wondering about that actually. Yeah that, yeah, that whole thing. I've not seen it yet, but that hall is St. George's Hall in Liverpool City Centre. You know, if you notice, yeah. even watch it, you'd have to bus stop in. You know, at the bottom it's like a yellow bus stop. Yeah, that's there in real yeah. life. They didn't yeah. they didn't they didn't VG it or whatever. They didn't they didn't remove it from the scene. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so there's like a so, that's funny. Yeah, so there's a major rail <laughs> bus stop, you know, in the bottom right corner when they're panning in. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, they film a lot of movies. No, I enjoyed it though. I was Growing up as a kid, I was always a Batman fan, so it was kind of cool. And it's always funny to me, like, Marvel tries to be comic booky, you know, like they're very funny or whatever. But, like, Batman movies always end up being just so gloomy. Yeah. <laughs> Br- brooding. Yeah, they exa- yes. Next the word for it. They always just, like, you can't help but watch and feel depressed afterwards. Well, just, like... But it's always man, nighttime, man, isn't it? Dark. You know, in Batman movies, it's always nighttime, never daytime, always is it? pouring it's, rain. Someone yeah, never right. daytime. Someone once told me that in like, Batman comics and Batman movies, right? Like the sun only shines uh, when something very bad is going to happen. Also, it's like, oh, yes. the, the sun is up. Either Bruce Wayne is experiencing some terrible, bitter heartbreak, or like everything's about to right. explode and be caught on fire. <laughs> And then clouds of smoke yeah. will obscure the sun. Yeah. Whenever you see the oh, sun, crap, oh, is Batman going to be unmasked? It's like ominous music. Who is this? Yeah. I, or there's a Superman crossover. Sure. And Superman's in the yeah. <laughs> He needs that sun. Because he needs the sun. funniest for me was with the Batman, the cast that they assembled for that was, it was funny. So I didn't realize it until the credits started rolling. That Colin Farrell plays the penguin. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. come on. I was like, that's amazing. What a. If they don't win in some sort of Oscar yeah. for, for that makeup. makeup. Holy oh. moly. And then the, uh, impressive. the guy who played Carmine Falcone was uh, John uh, Tartufo or Tart- 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 Tartuo. Tart- 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 yeah, Tartuo, Tart- 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 I think. Where I, I remember yeah. him from Mr. Deeds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very sneaky. sneaky. <laughs> very, very sneaky. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, who was the other funny one that, that I enjoyed? Um, oh, the guy from Westworld was. Uh, he's not. Oh, yes, Gordon. he's not Commissioner Gordon yet. He's still Lieutenant Gordon. He's yeah. Detective, yeah, Detective Gordon. Gordon. But he, uh, yeah, yeah, when he came on the screen, I was like, man, that was spot on with that one, huh? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was a great Gordon pick. So. Yeah, the casting was awesome. But uh, so they announced they're going to do a sequel. Obviously, enough, enough money was made. <laughs> Can't get away with one Batman movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that they want more money. <laughs> but uh, no, it was good. Yeah, and obviously, I guess the sequel. You know, not to spoil it for Greg, there's somebody that you're introduced to at the end of the movie that I guess will be the the next villain. Who you you can maybe. tell me? I don't. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't spoil easily. <laughs> there's a oh. there's a Joker cameo yeah. at the end in, uh, in but, Arkham, he's but he's Arkham? already in jail. Right. Yep, he's already well. He's at yeah, I guess yeah. You're at his Arkham. That's where the Riddler went. Which that was the other one, Paul. Uh, uh, is that Paul Dunn or what's his name? The actor, yeah. Paul, Paul Dano. Dano. He was he was the yeah. Riddler. Yeah. He did oh, a great job God. at the Riddler. So creepy. I mean, parts of that movie are like borderline seven yeah, yeah, yeah. esque. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep, with the traps and everything. Like murder yeah. thriller type stuff. That was I mean there was some of it too. And again, like that comic book movie feel. Where I was just like either Bruce Wayne is some kind of, you know, Mensa candidate or he's just the world's best detective. Because <laughs> like there's some clues that you're just like, no, no, you didn't just come up with that two seconds after they found it. Like, <laughs> That's his deal. Amazing. <laughs> He's so good. Yeah. I mean, he is the, the world's greatest detective. They just have never shown you that in the 
right. film versions. So, but yeah, I, uh, actually this weekend on my long ride on, on Sunday while yeah. I was doing the pretzel, I started uh, Civil War for the MCU. Yeah. Which actually I felt kind of bad because I wanted to watch that all yeah. together without having to stop it. But we'll see. That'll be next week. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to that. <laughs> I'd like to provide a public service announcement for those doing the dirt challenge. If you have a kicker bike and your power up button is close to your turnaround button, be very careful where you hit. <laughs> Because I did the full 20-minute epic KOM effort into the sprint. And I'll say I might have been cheating a little bit with the sprint because I came upon Greg and a pack of <laughs> endurance riders, all dirt. And I was like, oh, this could be an epic sprint. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smoke I this. I was bit. wondering. It's like, this would be great. And then I went, to, I went to hit my power up, and I hit the reverse button that turned me around. <laughs> So not only did I lose all my speed on the sprint, I also ended the course, which thereby ended my effort for the dirt challenge. So, so, yeah, so what are you doing do this that. weekend, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> I told Drew I'm not touching that dirt challenge till the end of the month. That's right. Yeah, I kind of feel I'm was... going to have to do that again because I wasn't actually doing yeah. the challenge. I was yeah. just completing the badge last weekend. And then I realized that it was a challenge. I was like, oh, I'll just upload my times. But I think I'm coming last on every single segment. <laughs> I did stop. No, I did okay. stop to do a, I I did stop to do a calibration. Can't have that. Halfway up with the epic KOM, yeah. which is why I've got a time of 40 minutes. I kind of got off my bike and unplugged the trainer and stuff. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to win you any pride yeah. coming last on every single. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think, I think my time yeah. was 245. So that's the low bar. Total, total finish. I know you've beaten me. Wondering. I don't think I. Yeah, you I, know think what I'm, I think I'm slowest on every segment. <laughs> <laughs> what was your, uh, Drew, what was your epic time? Forward epic. 22, Dang. 24, something like that. Let me say hello. That's fast. That's good. That's pretty fast. Mine was so 25 forward, flat. Forward epic was the only one that, the only climb that I really kind of put a lot of effort into. The other three. Yeah, it's the first three. I was like, yeah, I'm toast. Yeah. So, so what um, was it? Pulling it up here. Segments. Epic calm. I did. No, nope, sorry. I lied. Way off. Okay. 27 minutes. We still Way beat off on that one. All right. You still beat me by 12. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that's it. Then the epic calm reverse. I hit 3056. Okay. That was the one where, especially yeah. like the second half of that, I was granny gearing up. I was like, at that point, I was watching Civil War and I was like, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will say the mechan or the technical error did work to my advantage because yeah. I was like, oh, I have to do the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Thank God. Like, after the first hard effort, and it was fun because I told you guys I'm preparing for the Fondo on June 5th, whatever. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try eating while I'm riding the whole thing. So I did the hard effort up the, the Epicon. <laughs> I ate like a cliff bar. And then I hammered the sprint. And then, actually, I took the green jersey, too, which yeah. was kind of cool. Um, Saturday it was morning, like Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, Mother's Day. <laughs> 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 probably, probably the only one on the course sprinting at that time. And... Uh, yeah, then by the time that I hit like the forward comm, I was like, okay, go a little hard here, good, get it. Hit the reverse comm, hit the other sprint, and then by the time I hit the reverse epic, I was just like, I'm toast, I'm done. It was tough. Good challenge. So, uh, also want to oh, yeah. plug uh, Chris Schwinker, our buddy Chris. Yep. He's doing his ride across America, still looking for sponsors. So, money. if anybody wants to pledge some cashola yeah. so the way he's doing it he's doing i think he's averaging like 100 yeah. kilometers per day so like 60 miles and he's going to draw a name out of a hat of the people that sign up to sponsor so just keep that in mind whenever you're signing up to pledge yep. per mile cool around about 60 miles probably so <laughs> but good for him all right so thus ends yeah. another wonderful episode neil thank you so much yeah, for man. joining us thank you neil I'm sure uh, 
you'll probably go to sleep now. Or at least oh, I would. Just if I were you. For a second. Oh. oh, it's okay. We'll have all the audio in the video. <laughs> yeah, just I think it's like we're dumb. Yeah. We're used to that though. Right, one blank for thirty seconds. It'll just be like, huh? What? <laughs> It'll just, we'll just make sure the audio doesn't sync like the game for Jose. <laughs> no dropouts. Apologies for that. <laughs> Sorry, Jose. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. until next week. Yeah. Cool. See you guys then. Good guys. Suck it, Miller.